This video gives you a brief overview of how to prepare and perform measurements with the Surpass Electrokinetic Analyzer and the software Attract. Let's assume we have mounted an adjustable gap cell and we want to measure a polypropylene foil. The first step is to fill your electrolyte circuit with solute to remove air and potential soluble sample residues. To do so, Select the task Fill in the device control bar here. To initiate filling, press the green Fill button down here. Filling begins, and you are shown a virtual display of your current device configuration here. The first 100 milliliters of the filled solution are passed through the instrument and dispensed. You can already see values displayed down here. There's already a basic reference value for the zeta potential, and then there's the gap height, the distance between the sample surfaces in the cell. This gap height should be adjusted to approximately 100 micrometers. Stop the filling process and readjust the gap height on the instrument. The next step is the rinse procedure. The goal here is to efficiently remove potential air bubbles caught in the measuring cell. To do so, the liquid is pumped through the cell with a higher pressure. The pressure you should select depends on the cell you are using. For the adjustable gap cell, a minimal rinse time of 180 seconds and a pressure of 400 millibar is recommended. Since you dispensed the first 100 milliliters of the solute during filling, you now have to change the positions of the hoses. Check this box here to confirm that you have correctly connected the outlet hose. Now you can start rinsing. During the rinse procedure, it's important to observe the cell resistance as it indicates potential air residues in the system. Once the cell resistance is constant, you know the measuring cell is correctly filled. This is the earliest point to stop the rinse procedure. After preparing the cell and the instrument in this way, the next step is to create a measurement program. We are now going to perform a single measurement. At the end of this video, we will briefly take a look at a measurement including titration. In this middle part of the dialog, you can add solutes. The two standard solutes for titration, hydrochloride and sodium hydroxide, are preset in this list as well as the measurement solute potassium chloride. Simply add more, depending on your requirements. Then select the cell you wish to use in this drop-down list here. We are using the adjustable gap cell. We do not need to choose any titration units, because we are performing a single measurement now, so we can skip this part. Finally, we give our measurement program a name down here. Let's call it AGC Test. Confirm your program with OK. Now you have created a measurement document. In the measurement document view here, you are shown the different steps of the measurement. In our case, it's only one step. Under Parameter Set up here, you can define your target pressure and rinse time for your measurement, for example. The information is all contained in this one line here. There's a drop down list of parameter sets, both predefined and customized. To define a new parameter set that is not yet contained in the list, go to Library Measurement in the main menu and choose Standard Parameter Sets. Add a new set here and enter your parameters.
select a certain pressure and a certain time for rinsing. Then select a target pressure for the measurement, depending on your sample and measuring cell. For the adjustable gap cell, 400 millibar are recommendable. A single measurement typically consists of four ramps. Select a time period for every single ramp. The standard value for these is 20 seconds. Select your result, streaming current or streaming potential. For standard measurements with the adjustable gap cell, streaming current is recommended. Then save your parameter set. Now you can select it from the drop-down list in the measurement document. In case you've changed your device configuration, you first need to confirm this new configuration by checking this box in the device control. Now you can start your measurement. Here you see the measurement's progress. This step after rinsing here, identification, relates to adjustment processes inside the instrument. This is optionally integrated into the rinse step to save time. After identification, the syringes move to their start positions for the actual measurement. The measurement solute is drawn up by the syringe and the measurement is performed. During the measurement, the additional parameters pH, conductivity and temperature are measured. Down here you see all measured parameters. The first measurement ramp is concluded. The summarized results are shown in this right panel, in the standard diagram of the zeta potential as a function of the pH value. The individual measured data is stored and displayed in this table here. Let's skip ahead a little while the system measures the four ramps. After the fourth ramp is measured, a pop-up informs you that your measurement program has been fully processed. The red dot here marks the final result, the average of the four single ramps. By changing to a view of single ramp data, we can check the quality of this result in these so-called pressure ramps, for example, with the flow rate as a function of the applied pressure. Here we can also view the streaming current of the sample through the measuring gap, with the streaming current as a function of the applied pressure. The result for the measured polypropylene foil is negative in the pH neutral range, by the way, which was to be expected. This was a single measurement without titration. Now let's briefly look at a measurement including titration. In this case, Prepare your measurement the exact same way, with the exception of your settings in the Measurement Document dialog, where you select the acid or base you wish to use for titration. Then select pH titration by checking this box and define the limit at which the titration should stop. We are performing an acid titration so a lower pH value, such as 3, makes sense. Your chosen titration unit and solute are displayed here in this panel. Once again, you can choose your parameter set for the measurement. Now apply your configuration. Now you can start. A first measurement is performed without titration at the electrolyte's inherent pH value. Above these indicated steps, you are provided with information on the titration. Several measurements at different pH values are performed, and your results are shown in the different views you saw earlier. Finally, some words on your export options. Whichever type of measurement you choose to perform, by clicking this icon up here, 
you can export and save your diagram. By clicking on this icon down here, you can export the summarized data of your pH titration. By selecting a measurement step and clicking on one of the column headers in the measuring data table, you can export this data to Excel.